some more runoff from the glacier. I just gonna bite some piece off maybe. I mean that's up to you, it's your dental plan. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon internet, it is two o'clock in the afternoon and welcome back to the channel. I did not leave this morning and I'll tell you why. Do I have the map here? I am now very close to the Matanuska Glacier, kind of on my way to Anchorage. So as you probably know, I'm on my way to Anchorage to get my fork seal fixed or replaced or I don't know what's going to happen. I'll sort it out in Anchorage. But on the way, I'm passing this glacier and I don't really want to just ride past it. So I'm going to do a glacier hike this afternoon and then tomorrow morning continue to Anchorage. That's my plan. So it's about 20 kilometers from here right and then I can walk on the glacier. So let's go. It's not allowed to uh, go and uh, walk on the glacier on your own. Which makes sense because glaciers are quite tricky and dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and well I rarely know what I'm doing so <laughs> the area is just <laughs> absolutely spectacular. I did not know that the mountains here were so high, really had no clue but it's really a spectacular place. So the glacier I think it's somewhere behind those mountains over there. Glacier access, one mile. Danger, road unsafe. Oh. Wow, look at that. <laughs> it's just right in front of me there. I have to cross this river. What an amazing view, look at this. Honestly, wow. Welcome to Alaska, this is amazing. And it's a fast flowing river. I guess with this type of weather, this glacier is melting, melting. Must be a lot of uh, glacial runoff at the moment. Look at it. Yeah. Water is like dark grey. Right. Oh. Oh, some more runoff from the glacier. What's your name? I'm Maguire. Maguire. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you are going to take me safely on the glacier and back and I'll stuff. I'll try to take you safely, <laughs> but yeah. No, yeah, no, definitely I will. When did it reach until here? Yeah, know? so here, it was here about 60 years ago. It was actually off at the edge of this parking lot. Okay. But then about 16,700 years ago, it was actually in Anchorage. So it's done a lot of shifting. But uh, it's been, like I said, it's been hanging out here for about 60 years. Yeah. But it's been back there for probably about... 20 or 30 years it's been in that area. Okay. We're gonna get moving. Actually yeah. get you out onto the ice and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get All right. start heading this way. How fresh is this bear print? So this is, is probably it? about a week old. About a week. So yeah, I was out here, I was chasing a moose. Because something what's this smaller print? Uh someone probably had their dog down here. Oh. Uh, yeah, like that's a bear print. You got another yeah. one right here. So yeah. cool thing about this one, this is the front. You can yeah. kind of measure it, how like tall the bear actually was because of uh like how wide its bear print was. Okay. About six to seven inches wide. Uh, say the bear is around six to seven feet tall on its hind legs. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a pretty big grizzly bear. Eight, um, yeah. It's probably hanging out over there right now. Oh, oh that's, that's pretty awesome. Good to know. <laughs> so this is called thixotropic mud. Yeah. Non-Newtonian fluid. Kind of look where I'm walking. 
You can kind of see oh, it's supposed wow. to look like a water bed. You can get to a spot it's bouncy. like this. Yeah, you can kind of like dance around on it. But then you got to sink but if yeah. you... But it's like yeah. a quicksand basically. Exactly. Also this stuff that you take and do like glacial facials with. So you rub oh. a little bit on your face or anything like that. It's basically like doing skin. a mud bath. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice and soft and everything. It exfoliates really well because it has those little tiny rocks in there. So it's that black color because it absorbs all of that light on the visible spectrum. It does so because, you know, super, super dense, not a lot of air in it. Normally hangs out at the bottom of the glacier. Uh, it's kind of been exposed right now. Like I said, absorbing all of that light, you shine your phone light down in there, it would go a few inches on a really pure spot. Like I said, we're standing on a couple hundred feet of ice right now. There's no air interacting with it. It's gonna appear to be that black color. It's gonna be yeah. super dense and it's gonna absorb all that light. I guess so. That's so cool. And basically everything we're walking on top of, you can see it over there, all through here, like basically all like, so it's kind of like dune looking things. It's primarily going to be black ice. It's going to be covered by that silt, keeping it nice and cool away from the sun. And uh, it's allowing it to stay in this fashion. Uh -huh. These are for you. Thank you. Do you know what size in, uh, you wear? Um, eight, I think. Eight? Okay. Is that possible? Yeah. That I don't should know. actually here. I'll try a small first just because you have tennis shoes on. Obviously. I have European size 39, but I don't that, know. That I does a little for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's eight. Yeah, I can try yeah, those. Yeah, all right, thanks. So we got something really cool right here. Uh, uh -huh. This is a Mulan. It's not named after, you know, the beloved, bubble, yeah. beloved kids movie. Uh, it's named after basically the French word for mill. Okay. You know how a mill works, kind of like grinds down yeah. in the, the grain or anything like that. Same thing's happening here. You can see we got water flowing in, a lot of it actually. Uh, this isn't really rising though. What's happening, basically this is turning into a drill. You can see right there, there's kind of like a little spiral going on. Yeah. You know, like that silt on the top's moving. Basically it is just drilling away at that ice, going deep down in there, chipping away at it. Ah. It's actually really cool because it does expose all like that blue ice that we normally don't get to see. I mean, that ice, this stuff is pretty old out here. Uh, that ice probably hasn't seen the sun in a very long time. So if you would dive down here, you could maybe potentially go meters and meters down. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I mean, this is only three-ish weeks old. Okay. And at one point in time, it was only like right in this area. You could fit a couple people in there. I mean, now you can fit 10, 12 people. And that's not even without knowing the depth. So yeah, it's right. really deep. Uh, I don't want to find out simply because, you know, little swirls going on. I don't want to know where that's yeah. going. Okay. But it's really cool because it is exposing all that blue ice. Yeah. We're going to start seeing a lot of it. It's going to be at our feet. You can kind of see also, it's going to be in places like this as well. Again, under that white yeah. ice. Yeah. Same thing as the black ice. Yeah. Medium density, just enough air in there to reflect back that blue light. I kind of talked about that Mulan. We don't really know how deep it is. Yeah. Uh, it's actually really common to not actually know how deep water is on the glacier. So kind of see here, oh. um, not hitting the bottom. Oh, wow. This is about 90 centimeters. Uh, what if, I don't know. Another, what that would be in centimeters. Yeah. <laughs> Another 50 or something. Yeah. So pretty deep. We've been out here six foot poles haven't hit the bottom obviously this is something you would like die if you fell into but you'd get super wet yeah. and uh yeah. obviously you don't want to get your boots or your entire body wet so yeah we're never gonna like really cross over something like this if we do obviously i'm gonna let you know yeah i'm gonna keep that a secret but uh something pretty cool that just happened out here really. yeah. you can kind of see we kind of got a uh, overhang right there yeah. Uh, I don't want that falling on top of you, obviously. Yeah. The ice can be surprisingly heavy, uh, contrary to what people might think. We are in a melt, too, so obviously don't need anything breaking off and stuff like that. How long this crack in the ice has been here? You, uh, you know, I want you to guess. Give me oh. a number. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so keep it under 2.5 million, but give me a number. Under 2.5. Well, I mean, it's a seems like a pretty deep one. D um, I'm thinking 20,000 years. About six weeks. Oh. <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks. So yeah, when I started here about seven, eight weeks ago, wasn't here. Back on June 20th, I could cross it just stepping like this. Yeah. Obviously, I can't cross it now. Uh, yeah. Lord knows I can't make that jump either. In yeah, six weeks. About six and a half weeks old. 
Wow. That water's just getting down in there. Oh, Basically positive feedback loop. You know that from science. But yeah. what, what, what do you estimate? I mean, you don't know how deep it is, but what do you estimate? Probably about 30. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to fall in. Uh, uh, feet or probably meters? Probably like 35, 40 feet. feet. That's down to the water. After right. that, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Crevasses can only get up to about 150 feet though. Because they'll okay. start to collapse under their own weight. All right. Okay. Well, that's that's uh, uh, good to know. Yeah. Do you sometimes hear like the, the hear the cracking? Oh yeah. No, definitely. I've been standing here and I've like we felt it like cracking and everything. Oh, you felt it even. Yeah. It was like kind of the ground was shaking a little bit. All the people on my tour looked at me and I was like, okay, we're going over here now and we're not gonna stay here. Wow. But uh, you never see something just like not like the movies. Obviously, stuff doesn't just no. You can definitely feel that walking on the ice here that is it's cooler than off the glacier but I mean overall I'm still looking like <laughs> in a t-shirt so it's quite a warm day today to be on the glacier yeah this yeah. is that same uh, crack in the ice yeah wow but you can see it here you don't see barely anything it's just starting yeah, it kind of stops right and well, then it started it all gets... the way down there and it's kind of made its way this oh way. sorry it goes the other way yeah, yeah. No, you didn't know it's fine <laughs> there's no quiz at the end of it <laughs> No, this was actually filled. Wow. You can kind of see some water here. Uh, this was actually full about oh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like it would like come here, all yeah. the way up to here, and like we had no idea that it was like this deep. I can just hear the water. There's like a little waterfall here, I yeah. think. Yeah. Oh, they're basically everywhere. You can kind of see them trickling yeah. down that way. Yeah. probably about at least 20 feet of water down in there. It actually yeah. used to go a lot deeper. Well, it yeah. still goes that deep. But you can see that deep without the water. And you got actually that water. My shoes are not so waterproof as yours. So, I mean, so basically, I'm gonna collect water that has been trapped in the glacier for how many hundreds of years? About 600. 600. Yeah. This is cool. So yeah, we can uh, obviously want to avoid the. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is a really cool oh, spot. Oh wow! You can even hear just how. Quiet it's quiet, it is yeah. To everything. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. You can see like where the cracks were in the ice. It's kind of been healed over. That water gets in there, basically flash freezes. We call them like sutures. That's okay. kind of what's been happening. Yeah. But they do form that very pretty blue color. We got like these sunspots, water spots here, kind of looking like a golf ball. That's uh, the sun melting the snow yeah, on the, the side. Yeah. The melting it. It's kind of hitting it at like all those different angles. Yeah. The water's flowing down in there. Yeah. It makes a really cool texture. It almost really looks like awesome. plastic over there. It's really. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Here I almost like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so we produce about 99 million gallons an hour, uh, all of fresh water, obviously. Wow. I mean, Alaska only needs about 75 million gallons a year. The whole, to, uh, the whole, whole state, state of Alaska. The whole state of Alaska. Wow. It only needs about 75 million gallons a year. We produce that in well over an hour, so it's wow. pretty awesome. The face. This is it. Wow. Like I said, 400, 500 feet tall. Got another 1,200 feet of ice underneath that. Those big seracs up there and everything like that. Amazing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah.
cool stuff about this. It's called puzzle piece ice. You okay. can see it has that little fingerprint in there almost. Yeah. Kind of that section. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what's happening here, you can see we got water actually flowing back in here. The uh, top layer is actually pretty smooth relative to what you might think it is. Inside yeah. it basically is kind of like something that would come out of a vending machine. But yeah, if you check it out, you can see there is water basically through this entire top layer back in there. It's yeah. basically doing all that carving because yeah. that puzzle not being a perfect puzzle is allowing yeah. that water to flow through. Give like that little fingerprint pattern. Okay. So yeah, if you want to eat some, yeah. you can always just come over here. I'll break a piece okay. off. I just gonna bite some piece off maybe. I mean, that's up to you. It's your dental plan. <laughs> <laughs> I can always get you a smaller one. All right, mm. Very good. Yeah. So cool stuff about this is that a way we do date the ice is how much trillium is in it. Mm -hmm. Trillium is hydrogen three. Uh, it's not actually naturally occurring in any part of the world, other than you know when atom bombs get tested. So we can kind of tell how old the ice is, if it has trillium in it or not. Uh -huh. uh, this stuff at the front right here is going to be fairly older, so more than likely it doesn't have any in it. But okay. Like water like this and everything that's flowing off, I mean, there's just trillium hanging out in the air. So uh, you can kind of date it by that. But no, it's really uh, cool. Some yeah. of the older stuff, like I said, 600 feet, uh, excuse me, 600 years old yeah. at the face. No trillium in it. A lot of that younger stuff is going to have that trillium in it. So does this have any health benefits, you know, to eat this ice? See, I'm actually 572. And uh, <laughs> I do the glacial facial, eat my glacier ice and everything like that. Here, this one is cool. Yeah. Well, what's really cool about it, you can see like the... Uh, you can see the air, no? Yeah. Oh, wait, like I'm the sorry. air bubbles flowing through it and everything. Look at the black ice. Rocks frozen in the black ice. That's so cool. See, it's like... You know, it looks like it's just mud, but it's there's only a little bit of mud laying right on top of the black ice. Wow. Okay, now I have a handful of... Oh, well, this is going to be good for my skin as well, yeah. right? So now the inside of my hand is going to make me look 10 years younger. Yeah. Uh, that's excellent. Okay. Wow, that was amazing, amazing. Really enjoyed that tour. And yeah, it was amazing to walk on the ice. And also, yeah, to realize that the glacier, the, the mouth of the, the origin of the glacier is 25 miles further, you know? So you're only really seeing a tiny bit of it. But um, really impressive. What an awesome day gonna stay another night in the place uh, where I left this morning and then tomorrow morning continue to Anchorage it's only 175 k's I think from here so uh, yeah I'm gonna find myself a dinner in a place along the way see what they uh, serve up in this part of Alaska last look on the glacier Fantastic, right? Let's check out what there's to eat here. So on the menu, we have halibut, salmon. Oh, this looks amazing. Seafood pasta, halibut salad. Alaskan rockfish tacos. I think I'm gonna go for the pancit copper river red salmon. Since I crossed the Copper River a few times, I think I'm gonna go for this one. Oh, look at this beautiful salmon. Oh. Mm. Okay, on my way to Anchorage. The weather has uh, changed. The sun has gone. So, uh, but that's all good. Um, I'm just, yeah, it's 176 k's to Anchorage. And the first thing I'll do there is to ride to the Honda dealer because I ordered some parts. I need a new uh, chain and sprocket and I ordered like my last tire set. So those tires are going to, well, bring me all the way up to Purdo Bay, including I think quite some detours I'll be doing. But I don't think I'm going to have the work done there because remember the string construction at my seal 
So Chris, the, the tour guide of the group of uh, GS riders that I met, he has a good contact, uh, his name is Bill, a uh, very good mechanic. So I've already been in touch with Bill and he actually already sourced me uh, new seals. So I'm going to his place anyway to do that work and then he said he can also do the tires and chain sprocket and stuff. So let's see if I manage to fit the <laughs> both tires on the back and then ride to Bill's place and then uh, yeah, see what's, what's gonna happen next. Well, even with cloudy weather, you can just see how breathtaking it is here. Pretty cool road. Just snaking through the mountains up there ahead. So I've done all my shopping here. I got most of the parts that I need. And this is Bill over here. So he came to meet me here, which is great because he now has the tires <laughs> in the car. So we're now going to his uh, work workplace, workshop. And uh, get started, I think, or maybe tomorrow. First of all, she's clean. <gasps> hey, you already put something. Yeah. Oh. You got a little bit of a 990 on there. Nice. Oh, that's going to be so nice. And then uh, this is the mount that I, I can borrow. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's much better than <laughs> just having it loose there. The problem is, is it's moved your bag a little bit forward. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Did you know about that? Yeah, that's uh, that dent has been there for a long time. This one, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you did bend it back a little bit. It was yeah. worse. Um, new sprocket, new chain. Yes. So like I said, on your on your counter, your counter shaft, you can pull this off if you want to take a look at it. But the, it wobbles on the shaft really bad, and it's got the shaft splines are really worn. Yeah. So. That shaft needs to be replaced. Oh yeah, that's pretty bad after yeah. so little mileage with it. Yeah. And see how white that spark plug is. Yeah. This shouldn't be white. That means it's lean, so it needs to be richened up a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I was asking if you had tune or anything done to no, it. No, no, I didn't. But it's not burning any oil through there. Here's okay. your sprockets. Yeah. That was really bad. Really finished. Yeah, really. I know. I know, but that was finished for a while. Yeah, that's been finished <laughs> for a while. And I just had to keep on going. Yeah, the chain was really terrible. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Our pads. Yeah. I changed your bolts, your, your uh, pinch nuts. On your jam, there. okay. So you got new ones on there because it was so rounded off; it was really hard to get them. Yeah. So wow, your pedal, nice. I pulled it apart and cleaned it in there. Your pivot point, because your pedal was getting a little, well, it was starting to hang up a little bit. Um, Chris did your guards. He did that yesterday. The the Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I put the decal on, but he cleaned those. Oh, up. he did. Right. Great. Yeah, new seals, new oil, everything. Yep. And new Alaska. So I am borrowing this little uh, sheepskin from that comes from the 990. And then where did you get, I have two new mirrors, where, where did you get this, those from? They came off of the KLR sitting right over there. <laughs> that one has no mirrors anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alaska is turning into part KLR, part uh, KTM. What else? Fork seals came from KTM, Honda didn't have them. Oh yeah, that's KTM true. Had KTM had the, had the seals, yeah. 
Honda has nothing in stock. All right. Oh yeah, and then uh, the word Alaska came from um, Michelle. Came uh, from Michelle. Alaska Motorcycle Adventures. She donated. She donated the Alaska letters. So thank you so much, Michelle. <laughs> really appreciate. All right. So I am back uh, right here at my Airbnb. This is where I'm staying. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Alaska just looks really different. I mean, now with KLR mirrors and well, this I'm just borrowing. I'll give it back to him. But if I really like it, I might uh, purchase one. They sell them here in Anchorage. And uh, well, of course, I have my brand new tire. So I've got a, again the uh, D606 on the back and the Pirelli MT21 on the front. So I really like that combination. Yeah, Bill is just an absolute legend. Wow, what a super good mechanic and just a generally really nice person but i don't know i have this feeling like guys like bill who have their own separate shop they just took they just do a much better job at actually looking after the motorcycle than when i bring her to like a bigger honda dealer i just feel like they'll tick off things but they don't actually check the bike i don't know how to explain i don't know if you've ever had a similar experience but I'm so happy that he really checked everything and um, some of the things we are still gonna do. So my plan is to first explore a little bit of the Kenai Peninsula, so south of Anchorage, before heading all the way up north towards Prudhoe Bay. So um, that will give Bill some time to search. We're gonna change the steering head bearings. Uh, they really need to be changed as well. Anyway, like some small things, some bearings and um that will you know be absolutely fine to ride to Prudhoe bay and back but alaska needs like some some more work after this i mean she clocked almost 39,000 kilometers now and if you've been following this season she got a lot of abuse a lot of abuse and um yeah <laughs> i've not been super gentle on her so i'm just really happy with the job that bill did Honestly, if you ever are in Anchorage with your motorcycle, go to Bill. Like, honestly, really, really good mechanic. So I'm really happy. And um, yeah, so in the next video, I'm gonna explore the Kenai Peninsula. Looking forward, the weather forecast is bad. So yeah, pretty much like today, I think. So I'm probably gonna catch some rain, but I'm just hoping it's not gonna be too bad and not the whole day. And I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting ride. So that was it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and then I'll see you in the next video.